which is hell. I literally just remembered a fucking something stupid I made a long time ago. What? What did you just make? Was it when remember, an, remember the Andy Dick ostrich? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yes. You oh, me? Okay, so I, I had this really fucked up moment where we were driving in a car, and I just happened to look out into this open field, and I zoned out, and I just thought of, like, an ostrich, like, just poking its head up and going, just, Andy? Oh, God. <laughs> Andy, 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 Andy. And I'm like, oh, my God. It'd be so fucked up if Andy Dick was an ostrich. <laughs> Andy Dick here. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> that's wacky. Andy, Andy, Andy. Like, that's all it does. It's like a fucking Pokemon, dude. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot it. <clears throat> Kill it before it lays eggs. That is horrifying. <laughs> That is outright, or and it's that's haunted me my whole life. Because you know you're really good at painting pictures in someone's mind, and so every, it haunts me. I still have, I came across the photos that I made not too long. Or, I mean, it was a while back, but please don't show them to me. Why? I'm excited. I show do, like them. Photoshop show them. and yeah. dick with like an. Uh, yeah, he was smiling oh and everything. God. It looks great. It looks like it should be on like a Kohl's wall for clothes. <laughs> An Andy Dick ostrich. Yeah, I don't know why he'd be shopping at Kohl's or something, but, you know. Oh, that'd be a great album cover. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. you like the Tony Danza tap dance extravaganza, but yes. the Andy Dick ostrich. Yes. Oh, my God. The Andy Dick ostrich project. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm in it. <laughs> All right, we have to make this a thing. We need to get us an animator, and we're going to make a fucking an album, and it's going to be great. Oh my god. Yeah. We're gonna get sued. <laughs> but no, no that, that, that movie Wait, I was I talking about, sued? though. Huh? Nothing. Hey, sorry. No, no, I, was just gonna, <laughs> I was just gonna say that uh, you wanted to know a movie that I didn't know if I like liked or hated. Oh, yeah. um, the Alchemist Cookbook. Yeah. Yeah, so like, uh, this dude's out in the woods, and it goes in like these chapters, and he, he's like fucking around with like you're not really sure what at first, mm -hmm. but then it looks like he's like almost making meth in like a trailer. So I'm just like, oh, Breaking Bad in the woods. Okay, let's let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so this dude's out there. He's alone, and then he has this friend who like makes runs at a town, and he says like it's about an hour, hour and a half each way. So you know he's like out in the boons, you know. Yeah. So he's in the middle of like literally fucking nowhere, and he's making all this shit. And next thing you know. He's just like, you know, I'm going to hail some Satan. So he starts fucking summoning, um, oh, fuck, Belial. He starts su trying to summon Belial in the woods. And, like, he starts doing all this weird fucking, like, dark witchcraft type stuff. And it, it, it's a very, like, atmospherical film. Like, it's really tense. You don't know what's going to happen next. You keep hearing these, like, little grumbles and growls and shit. But, like... This, his friend who, like, f is fleeing from somebody, he ends up coming there, and then he kind of, like, fucks off into the woods because he got threatened to, like, leave. And, it, like, the main dude was holding a knife up to him. So he, dude was just like, okay, you're crazy, and he leaves. But then he finds him later, and he's like, like, Belial's inside of him, and he looks really fucked up. And then he, like, he ha has that whole moment where, like, he comes back, he's like, oh, my God, is that you? What the fuck is going on? And then he goes right back into the whole fucking, like, demon type thing. And, like, he's standing around a campfire. It, like, it makes you really uneasy, but the ending fucking just kicks you in the dick. In what regard? In, in the fact that, um, I'll put it like this. They pulled the Game of Thrones. Oh. No, 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 no. I'll take it even further. They did a Sopranos. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah, literally. That is bullshit. And for those of you who are listening and have seen the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Instead of cutting way mid scene, he he thinks that he's like one and everything. Spoiler alert! And he looks up and he just like ah, and then it just stops and just slowly zooms in on his face like somebody used Windows Maker at the end. Like oh fuck, we lost the production value. <laughs> but there was so much potential with the movie. There was so much potential. It was just <sighs> it was unsettling. It was an unsettling film, but. Just that, to just to get kicked in the balls at the end, you're like, nope. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It was just, oh, it, it did not sit well with me. It was like eating a bunch of chocolate at like two in the morning, then going to sleep. You're gonna wake up <laughs> shitting the bed or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I, that's what happens to me when I eat too much, like frozen yogurt. But yeah, <laughs> no, I'm I'm, ki I'm kidding. I, I don't own a bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good but God. speaking of. All these other great things. Yeah, I mean, that's been a long intro. Well, we should probably tell you guys, you know, welcome back to Witch's Hill. 
Yes, I'm Pat. I am Tim. And we're here with some beautiful faces. We're here with Rolo, or Meat Hanky. Meat Hanky. Meat Hanky. Hey, Matt. Hey. And Judley. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> I work for a Canadian company, so I'm learning a little bit of French. Oh, yeah? I know Bonjour. And uh, je m'appelle Gustav. My name is Gustav? Yeah. <laughs> Your name's not Gustav. Oui. It's all I know. <laughs> it's all he knows. That's all I picked, that, it picked up in French class when I was in middle school. So, oh. you know, I got somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. Well, today we're going to be going back and be a little nostalgic. We're going to go back to the 90s and talk about some Ooh. of our uh, most favorite horror movies that caught our fancy. Fancy, fancy. Fancy, fancy in the pansy dancy. But before we get into it, if you have any inquiries, you can contact us at witcheshillradio at gmail.com. And, and why not join us on an episode? I thought you were going to harmonize with me. Oh. Harmony. Where we can occasionally we record, record on Facebook, Facebook Live at facebook.com forward slash witcheshillradio. That was a beautiful moment. Uh, you want to go to the closet and make out? Kind of. I mean, we can pause recording. <laughs> Alright, let's go back to the 90s. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, man. Fuck. <laughs> so, where do we want to start on this list? Uh, I'm just going to read off the first one that I put down. And which is the best one? I, I don't know. I mean, I guess that it's up to speculation. I, this or, one I guess, uh, remains opinion. supreme for me. Army of Darkness. In 1992. For those of you who don't know what it's about, it's a continuation, or rather, like kind of like a spin-off in a way, of I, Evil Dead, right? You could say it's a continuation of two. Huh. Well, uh, Ash is transported back to medieval days where he is captured by the dreaded Lord Arthur, aided by the deadly chainsaw that he has become, or that has become his only friend. Ash is set on a perilous mission to recover the Book of the Dead, a powerful tome that gives its owner the power to summon an army of ghouls. You wrote that. I didn't write that, actually. Oh, really? No, I just... I just these are the descriptions that were for the movie when I was looking them up. Okay, I was going to say... I'm just <laughs> reading them in a ridiculous voice. <laughs> that movie is so... I mean, I don't think anyone has anything bad to Iconic. say about it. Iconic. Iconic. Very. Yeah, I love that movie. I love it so much. My favorite part is the the, the little ashes. The little, goody little oh, two-shoes, goody yeah. little two-shoes. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, just, every, I just love Bruce Campbell. Hot enough for ya! <laughs> Oh, God, that's such a great scene. It was such the, a trippy movie. The yeah. slapstick in it was just beautiful. It, it was perfect. It wasn't too much. It wasn't too little. It was just... It was great. It was perfect. Yeah. My boomstick. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's my boomstick. Oh, good God. Could you imagine being like in that time era, and then all of a sudden he holds up this stick? And he's like, that's not a sword! Boom! Pussy! Like, that's what they, they would shoot him with an arrow. Oh yeah, he'd be dead. Like that would have been considered witchcraft at that point, and like it, it wouldn't. The rest of the movie would have been over. His stick explodes. Kill him. <laughs> that, that's not normal. I mean, they were pretty terrified of it. Well, I don't and know. I mean, they had cannons. They had cannons, but not I mean, like that. I mean, he like just that. blew apart dude's sword. So they are all just like, "Fuck is that?" I oh my god! Gosh, shot. that's unnormal. I'm good little two shoes. I'm good little two shoes. <laughs> So yeah, if you haven't seen uh, Army of Darkness, you should definitely get on that. That's a brilliant movie. Highly, highly recommend. Mm-hmm. Side note on that. Did you guys ever play the game Dead by Daylight? Dead by Daylight. Is that the murder one? Yeah, it's the four verse one. No, I did not killer. get a chance to play that one. I unlocked that. Like I, the movies or the game is on a Xbox Game Pass, and like DLC is you could play as Ash or like the killers are Michael Myers, Freddy. They added Ghostface, Leatherface. Oh, uh, shit. fucking the the pig from Saw. And then there's someone else. Damn, dude, that's a that's a mighty fine roster right it, there. It's everything except for fucking Jason, who just you know got his own game. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a true. lot of fun. We were like playing it the other night, and like you'll be working on something, a killer fucking pop around the corner, and I scream like a fucking girl though. Like it's it's <laughs> you know it's what? high pitched yeah, and it's... piercing. You should play some horror games with us. I would love to. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll be that'll be great because uh, we tried doing that a while back, and we I started getting really too pissed off at that fucking game because we were trying to do Resident Evil Two, and uh, 
It's just the they're... cameras were fucking up too. Yeah, but we'll figure that out. Yeah, we'll f- we'll figure that out as it goes on. But what's one of your uh, choices there, Jed? Uh, something I saw that you did not have on your list was uh, Man Bites Dog. Man Bites Dog. Never heard of this one. You've never heard of either of you two? Mm-mm. Ooh, it's a it's a Bel- it's a foreign Belgium film, and it's all about this camera crew that's following the serial killer around. Like he's paying them to document, and Ooh. he sh- like shows them everything. Like he just goes through his regular fucking day of like killing people and. He acts like a regular guy, goes to the bars, buying them drinks, and like convincing him, no, 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 don't, you can't leave. I'll pay you more. <laughs> it's kind of like the beginning for like movies like Creep and, and shit like that. Oh, shit. Now, it's phenomenal. Also on the flash drive that I need to bring to you. So, oh man, you got a laundry list. I do. Oh. <laughs> I can't wait. I got some dirty ones. Because <laughs> you were over when we watched. Oh man, I feel so bad for Amy and making her watch Evil Dead like that and totally underplayed it on her. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> they, we were going to turn on Evil Dead and. <laughs> how did you put it? How did you guys describe that movie? It's not. You guys were like, oh, it's not that bad. It's it's not. It's it's bad, but it's, you know, it's not. It's not that bad. It's not super gory. I yeah. laughed. I laughed. <laughs> you called me out on it. <laughs> I couldn't help it. I was like, what? Oh, that poor girl was whimpering through the whole thing. Was too, she really? She sat behind me and like, I could hear... Uh, oh. <laughs> and like, it, especially during the razor scene. And uh, like, oh, I knew, oh, oh, I, I'm such an asshole. <laughs> but it broke her a little bit. So, you know... You gotta break them in right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is true. This is true. It's all about how you go about doing it. Yep. I mean, you could completely ruin somebody. I mean, it could make for a fun day, but <laughs> it's, it's but. like when you throw the kid into the pool to teach him to swim. They're going, they're going to drown, or you know, instincts will kick in. <laughs> you know what? You Let just made die. me think of. Show them Friday the Thirteenth, and then just take them to Crystal Lake and just throw them in the water. And just be like, learn to swim. <laughs> Jason's gonna get you. Oh no! Oh, Jesus. Oh, that'd be great. That there's, is horrible. There's that but, pond with one or that lake with it, like that Jason statue mm-hmm. in, at the bottom of it. I would love to go and do that. Oh, that'd be cool. I've always wanted to scuba dive, so like going and scuba diving to Jason would be fucking. That'd be everything for me. Oh, sick. I have to jerk off in the water like 20 feet away from everyone. <laughs> <laughs> What's he doing over there? That's that just John. He's beating, beating his meat. He's got to. He told us the whole way here. And he's just going to whack it. Well, <laughs> he's really doing it. That's surprising. Sir, should I turn off the GoPro? <laughs> nah, keep no. recording. We're documenting this. I want to see it later. This is scientific. Everybody out of the water. <laughs> <laughs> the people need to see this. That's what brings Jason to life. <laughs> oh, fuck. There we go. There's the next Friday the 13th movie. How did this happen? <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, world. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what people need now. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Oh, fuck no. it. He was in space. He's going to come back with cum. Oh, man. Well, the hockey be... player one was funny. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. If you were to come, come back and uh, kill a goalie and actually join a fucking hockey team, and it's just a whole new adventure. <laughs> Oh, man. But let, let's keep it going and jump on to a, the next one. Yes. The Exorcist 3 from 1990. 90. Oh, we almost did it. I, I, oh, man. We almost had a, a super jail thing going on. Ha, ha. Ha, 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 God, I love that show. Anyway, The Exorcist 3. Would you like to read it, Timothy? No. Fuck. Yeah. Okay. Police Lieutenant Kenderman, played by George C. Scott, notices similarities between his current murder investigation and the methods used by the Gemini Killer, played by uh, Brad Dourif, who was executed 15 years before. He soon discovers the hospitalized mental patient, Jason Miller, claiming to be the dead serial killer. But who looks uncanny like a priest Kenderman knew who died during an exorcism? Woo! <laughs> As more bodies are found, Kinderman looks in connection, or for connections between the two supposedly dead men. I have not seen this one. I've yeah. seen parts of it and then tuned out because I, I it didn't hold my attention personally. It, it's the lackluster of the Exorcist movies. It just isn't there. It's it almost felt forced. It did at that point for a three with most movies. It is forced. 
So a lot of threes have been forced. Mm. Yeah, looking at uh, Alien Three. Alien Three. <laughs> Actually, oh, I think God. that's on here. That I agree. Here. Oh God, where well, is it? Where is it? You already mentioned it, so we have to go into it. Where is it? Where is it? Oh. Right there, 1992. Oh God! Go ahead. You brought it up. Now you can you can read it. Such oh, a terrible movie. movie. Sigourney Weaver. Ellen Ripley, played by Sigourney Weaver, is the only survivor when she crash lands on Fiornia. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Crashes on Florine. a plat. I'm just gonna cut this. <laughs> Crash lands on a planet. I'm not reading that. <laughs> a bleak wasteland inhabited by former inmates of the planet's maximum security prison. Once again, Ripley must face skepticism as the alien. Oh. And the alien as it hunts down the prisoners and guards. Without weapons or modern technology of any kind, Ripley leads the men into battle against the terrifying creature. And for God's sake, it is terrible. <laughs> 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 the, actually, this is the this is the one where they took the idea from H.R. Geiger and ran with it and didn't give him credit for developing the alien. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. They... It, Major plot hole right in the fucking beginning. I don't even want to talk about it. It frustrates me. Yep. Tim's upset, and now we need to give him a wine cooler. Yes, I need a wine cooler. Somebody get the silly straw. I want to jump to a good one. A good just one? Be- no, no, wait. Oh, yeah, that one? I was just yeah, about to say. Yeah. It, I right love there, that movie. I do, too. Fucking Idle Hands 1999. Oh, yes. Right before uh, 2000 came around and we all died from Y2K, because that happened. When slacker teen uh, Anton Tobias, played by Devin Sawa, has his right hand possessed by a demonic force, he finds that his life gets a lot more interesting. You really switched it up. <laughs> <laughs> While Anton finds himself an ample guy, his hand proves to be an, an appendage of death, killing his two best friends, Peanub, played by Eldon Henson, and Mick, played by Seth Green. <laughs> who returned to life as wisecracking zombies. In addition to murdering those closest to him, Anton's evil hand significantly hinders his chances of being with his lovely neighbor Molly. Played by Jessica Alba. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, see that movie. Ex- fun. I expected you to say that this also starred Rob Schneider. <laughs> yes, Rob Sh- <laughs> and it was rated PG-13. Yeah, I guess I kind of did do that voice, didn't I? You really count right into it. <laughs> Rob Schneider. God, He's I could a not. Carrot. Oh, I'm a carrot. Oh, oh, I could not imagine Rob Schneider in that audience. Just picture it. I would have loved it. Oh, you know what? Actually, it would have been great if he, if in, I mean, it was, yeah, if it was instead of, uh, God, who was the band playing? The Offspring. Yeah, The Offspring. <laughs> instead of The Offspring, it was Rob Schneider on stage. Just peeling back his head. No. Huh. I'm dead. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm dead. Made it easy. And when he ends, credits roll. I would love just to see him in the end scene when he's lying on the bed and he looks up at the fucking ceiling and it says like I- I'm still alive or it's like I'll check under the bed or something like that and it's written in like glow paint mm-hmm. and you find out that like Seth Green and uh, the other dude they wrote it on there like oh the high five and go to heaven <laughs> <laughs> oh man <laughs> yeah just by, just by that description it would already resell me on re-watching that movie yeah it's a ridiculous movie of it's time but it is fucking great. A lot of awesome kills. Oh, yeah, definitely. But speaking of awesome kills, but some that actually didn't... Wasn't not as brutal as you'd expect it to be. What? For being a slasher film. Scream, 1996. Wes Craven reinvented and revitalized the slasher horror genre with this modern horror classic, which manages to be funny, clever, and scary. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna. I thought you were gonna jump in. That's why there was that long pause. I was trying to look at what you were reading. I'm like, why did you pre- say it that way? <laughs> that <was> weird. <laughs> As a fright mask, knife maniac stalks high school students in middle class suburbia. Craven is happy to provide both tension and self-parody. As the body count mounts, 
But the victims aren't always the ones you'd expect. Yeah, Shatner? Yeah. Can you imagine if he was the killer? <laughs> I am William Shatner. You are going to die, Sidney Prescott. The best part is as you read that, you did the whole hand motion. Oh, yeah, too. I totally did. I totally did. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I haven't seen it. What? Yeah. Oh, my God. Tim. I like it. A lot of I'm going to disappoint a lot of people. How can you not have seen... It's... It is my favorite 90s horror film just because it plays homage homage to fucking every other horror movie just by in like the the talking between the characters. Yeah, it's funny. Oh, you've got me pretty deep there, Billy. I'm feeling woozy. Like, <laughs> like just in that movie was great. Come on, give me the knife. It's my turn. <laughs> but like just through the whole thing they're talking about like all the like the the regular horror movie tropes of you know, oh God! These kids are all staring at this TV, and and they're not going to see the killer go walking past. And then there goes Ghostface in the background. Wait a the minute. garage scene. The garage scene. Wait a minute. I feel like an idiot because now I just realized I have seen this. <laughs> <laughs> I watched it like a couple months ago. <laughs> you sure you're not getting it confused with scary movie? Never mind. I am. <laughs> 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 Sorry, world. We just got your hopes up and crashed them. Yeah, I've disappointed people a second time. That's okay. Hate mail, hate mail, hate mail. That's fine. No, you I said not to disturb me when I'm cleaning my room. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Doofy! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That was such a great scene. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Fucking dick is that big giant fucking swirl fucking thing that comes in with the fucking vacuum. <laughs> I think we should just move on. Yeah, we should, we might we as well hit Scream 2 since you haven't seen, like, one. Alright, fuck it. Scream 2, 1997. Sydney, played by Nev Campbell, and Spoiler tabloid. Alert, she su- survived the first movie. Yeah, she survived. She survived getting run over by a tank by Ghostface because he used the codes from fucking, uh, GTA. Uh, <laughs> Sydney, played by Nev Campbell, uh, and tabloid reporter Gwen Weathers, uh, who was played by Courtney Cox, survive. <laughs> Courtney Cox, I love you. Uh, so <laughs> on that show. Yeah. Courtney Cox, I love you. You're so hot. On that show. Courtney Cox, Dad, you're so hot. Yeah, we'll Dad. talk about this later. <laughs> God damn it, Jeff. <laughs> oh man. We reference, we really reference South Park quite a bit. Anyway, they survived the events of the first scream. But their nightmare isn't over when two college kids are murdered at a sneak preview of Stab, a movie based on the events from the first film. It's clear a copycat killer is loose. Sydney and Gail, as well as fellow survivors Deputy Derry, played by David Arquette. We love you, David Arquette. And Randy, played by Jamie Kennedy. Everybody knows Jamie Kennedy from Malibu's Most Wanted. Have to find out what is behind, or who's behind the new murder spree before they all end up not alive, which is dead. Way to be a old bad <laughs> dramatic <works>. there. <laughs> yeah. Acting. When, when, <laughs> generally when you're dead, you know you're not alive. Yeah. Say that's a poltergeist. But do you really? I don't know. I guess I'll find out later. Mm. Yeah, we're going we're to offer all. him to a sacrifice of some sort. We're all going to find out later, we're actually. Gonna... You all had the Kool-Aid. <laughs> the transitioning is going to be fun. I'm already feeling sleepy. <laughs> don't laugh at me. I don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But... Jumps down all over again. <laughs> Speaking of movies that stand out... Let's talk about one that almost, or pretty much reinvented it, or generated its own type of genre, which is the found footage film. Let's talk about The Blair Witch Project of 1999. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. This was great how they did this one. Oh, yeah. Found footage tells the tale of three film students, Heather Donahue, Joshua Leonard, and Michael C. Williams, who've traveled to a small town to collect documentary footage about The Blair Witch, a legendary local murderer and witch. Over the course of several th- several days, the students interview townspeople and gather clues on su- uh, to support the tale's uh, veracity. But 
The project takes a frightening turn when the students lose their way in the woods and begin hearing horrific noises. Fun fucking fact, the director is a dick. Yes. He yes. tormented all the actors, but I would have done the same thing. Nope. Not to mention <laughs> the fact that didn't he have them like lie low after the movie came out, so that way everyone would think this was real? Yeah, that they were oh. actually mm-hmm. missing people and everything. They, oh, I, I, I will say this, that was very inventive, inventive and like far-reaching for that type of... You know, exposure. I mean, that's I. I think that's why it stemmed a whole style of horror movies. Well, I, I know a lot of people will say that it's played out nowadays, but this was the first of its kind that actually hit theaters. It was made by film students, and it became a success. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, and it's crazy because now, like, I believe they just announced at E three that they're making out a VR Blair Witch game. What? Yes. Is yes. it VR? Yes. 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 I think yes. it's first I oh, yes. yes. Yeah. And it looks yeah. amazing. <laughs> we posted up the link on our uh, on our Facebook page. I am going to have to get a VR for that. That oh. looks like fun. I mean, I still want to play, sadly, Resident Evil 7 in fucking VR, but... I want to play fucking Skyrim. I will play the fuck out of Skyrim for the millionth and hundredth time. You're gonna like break we'll everything in your house. That's the next okay. Game's gonna be <laughs> ten years of gameplay. I, I heard everything. that. The last one was eight eight years of gameplay. This one's gonna be ten. What the fuck? Yeah, they they didn't really do too much about it. They just said they're working, and uh, oh, I can't. It'll wait. hopefully be out on this system. Khajiit has no more wares. Khajiit is dead. <laughs> Khajiit always has wares. Khajiit comes back as spirit. I mean, I'm usually the Khajiit. What if you throw Are cat you? in a bed of Khajiit? I always have wares. Does that do something? <laughs> yes, I, I always. Hope so. Probably. I always play as a Khajiit. Oh, hell yeah. They like, I'm a fucking sneak. They like take it like cocaine. They just. <laughs> it, it's, it becomes the new form of skooma. Khajiit <laughs> 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 feels high. <laughs> Cause it feels good. Cause it feels time passing in my orifice. <laughs> 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 All right, let's let's just start to rub it up. <laughs> I don't want to hear any more of that sentence. Let's go to the <laughs> Silence of the Lambs from oh. 1991. Oh. hey, I was born in 1991, and my social security numbers. <laughs> Jodie Foster stares at Clarence Starlin, a top student at the Stars. FBI's... What? He said Jodie Foster stares. She just stares. Just Oh man, this movie's fucking scary. Why don't you do this one? <laughs> oh, fuck. Silence of the Lambs, 1991. Jodie Foster stars as Clarice Starling. Starling? Yeah, Starling. A top student at the FBI's training academy, Jack Crawford, played by Scott Glenn, wants Clarice to interview Dr. Hannibal Lecter, played by the famous Anthony Hopkins, a brilliant psychiatrist who is also a violent psychopath. Serving life behind bars for various acts of murder and cannibalism and not following me on Twitter, Crawford believes that Lecter may have some insight into a, a case and that start Starling? Starling? And that Starling, as an attractive young woman, may just uh, be the bait to draw him out. I stumbled over all of that. That's okay, I stumbled harder than you did. My bearings came out of my board, and I was like... Mm. I had speed wobbles towards the end of that. You, speed you held it, you held it. I did. You. I did. This was a great one. I fucking love the crazy factor of this. Amazing movie. You know the uh, the, the part when he looked like... That oh, was yeah. ad-libbed. Was he it? He ad-libbed that bit. Just to, That's why her reaction is genuinely freaked out, because she did not know that was coming. Oh, that's <laughs> oh. Anthony Hopkins is a Jesus. great actor. Yeah. Would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me hard. I can't wait for the fucking reboot of the... I know. Or not reboot, but the James Silent Bob thing. I want but, an audition to be him. I want to be <laughs> Silent Bob. Man, I got the beard and I'm the weight. Like, come on. <laughs> oh my God. In my off time, I wear a fucking hockey jersey all the time. I'm the fucking Chicago Kevin Smith. I'm taking pictures with people at Stratford because they thought I was a Kevin Smith lookalike. Really? I'm not even kidding. Holy shit. I mean, actually, you do kind of sound like him, too. Not thinking, not thinking about that. Huh. Kevin Smith, we got your doppelganger here. You should have let me be Silent Bob. 
You should let him be Silent Bob. <laughs> so, Kevin Smith, if you hear this, let me be Silent Bob. And subscribe. We don't know that you're there. If we knew that we were here, we'd... I don't know. I'd, I'd send you, like, a bouquet of, like, hugs or something. I'll give you a t-shirt. I'll... I'll give you one of my t-shirts. I'll give you one of my golden stars for the day. <laughs> oh, a t-shirt and a golden star. You know that's quite a tantalizing offer. Mm. 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 It's more than I get at work. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Same. Jacob's Ladder from 1990. After returning home from the Vietnam War, Vietnam uh, veteran Jacob Singer, played by Tim Robbins, struggles to maintain his sanity. Plagued by hallucinations and flashbacks, Singer rapidly falls apart as the world and people around him morph and twist into disturbing images. His girlfriend, Jesse, and ex-wife, Sarah, try to help, but to little avail. Even Singer's chiropractor friend, Louis, uh, I almost said Louise, uh, f- fails to reach him and he- as he descends into madness. Oh, yeah. Madness. You're going the wrong way on the ladder. Yeah, I didn't see this one either. I've seen parts of it. Never seen it. Uh, but this one, wow. I admit, did get by me. Yeah, this is the first for me. I, yeah, I've heard of the movie, but I've never got into it. I've no never shit. found a copy. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's one on your... That's the first time I've ever heard you say. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Wow. That's what we got to watch together. Okay. I want to watch someone together. Done. I All sense right. you guys are missing a movie. Did it get cold in here? Or did somebody yeah. fart? What? Sorry. What? Huh? It smells like dead people in here. It smells like dead people. The Sixth Sense, 1999. I was, t- I was hoping they'd... I know, I looked at the thing right after I was, I was saying that, and I was like, oh. Yeah, the, the, the sense. I sense you guys are missing something. You fucker! You wah, ruined it! Wah. Anyway, young Cole Sear, uh, played by Haley Joel Osment, is haunted by a dark secret and is visited by ghosts. Cole is frightened by visitations from those with unresolved problems who appear from the shadows. He is too afraid to tell anyone about his anguish except child uh, psychologist Dr. Malcolm Crow, played by Bruce Willis. As Dr. Crow tries to uncover the truth about Cole's supernatural abilities, the consequences for the client and therapist are a jolt that awakens them both uh, to something unexplainable. That's worded really weird. You should, uh, you should have done a voice. I was thinking about it, but then I just started thinking about the movie, and I, I was tr- refraining to, from putting in fucking jokes about Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I think about that one internet knockoff. Yeah, uh, fucking... Oh, yeah. 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 It's good. It's stupid. It's stupid. It is definitely not PC. It, it was... It was the knockoff of uh, Happy Tree Friends. Yeah, and yeah. you can find it on E-Bombs World and shit. It's probably on YouTube. Oh, oh, I wouldn't doubt it. E-Bombs World, that's something I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> what, E-Bombs World? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what do you guys have to say about The Sixth Sense? For, definitely for its time was great, <coughs> but it's... I don't think it's aged as very well. You don't think it or, held up? I think it's just because it became such a gimmick. It's such a gimmick, it's like, oh, he's a ghost at the end. Spoiler! But, you know, <laughs> for a ninth movie from 1999, Bruce Willis is a ghost, that's when it's like... Like, I didn't even see the movie, and I already knew that was the ending, because everyone was talking about the twist. <laughs> what a twist! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, man. I still say M. Night Shyamalan needs to work for Twizzlers, so that... You know, what a twist! twist. twist. And it's just, it works. I buy my Twizzlers. I already buy a lot of Twizzlers. Aha! Uh-huh, joke's on you. It's a uh, ghost pepper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> shit. Oh, what is this? I gave them oh. to all the kindergartners. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> this is still man. better than Lady in the Water. Oh, oh Jesus! <laughs> the stay in the 90s were such... Things don't exist yet. Oh, God. The village. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that movie. Anyway, uh, Event Horizon, 1997. Oh, this is one of my favorite horror movies. What is it? Like, this is... Uh, to me, this is the best sci-fi horror movie. Like, out beating Aliens. Just because it, it's so demonic I at I, times that it's... I think I got the perfect voice for it, then. Good. When the event horizon, a spacecraft that vanished years earlier, suddenly reappears, a team is dispatched to investigate the ship. Accompanished accompanied by the event horizon's creator, William Mears, played by Sam Neill, the crew of the Lewis and Clark, led by Captain Miller, played by Lawrence Fishburne, begins to explore the seemingly abandoned vessel. 
However, it soon becomes evident that something sinister resides in its corridors, and that the horrors that befall the Event Horizon's previous journey are still present. That was awesome, guys. <laughs> Event Horizon. That was that was brilliant. I, I think we convinced everyone listening to this to go watch that movie <laughs> right now. <laughs> God, we shared a full moment. I felt special. <laughs> so yeah, Event Horizon was a fucking nightmare. But speaking of somebody who still has nightmares, Wes Craven. It's 1994. Wes Craven's new nightmare. I actually watched this just the other night. Oh man, yeah, it was a it's a fun movie. I don't think I've seen all of it. Uh, all of this one, or just like every movie? No, I don't think I've seen all of any of the movies. Shocker. Yeah, I know, right? I just made I just. I just made Judd grumble at you. <laughs> Dude, my, I've got the, my copy of the first Nightmare on Elm Street, I got signed by Johnny Depp. Like, what? I, I fucking love the first one, yeah. Lucky, to meet Johnny damn. Depp years ago. <sighs> anyway, um, that's, I'm jealous, honestly. Uh, <laughs> reality and fantasy meet in unsettling ways in this installment of the long-running horror series, which finds director Wes Craven and actors Heather Lingenkamp and Robert England portraying themselves. As Heather considers making another film with Craven, her son Dylan falls under the spell of the iconic disfigured villain Freddy Krueger, still played by Robert England. Eventually, Heather uh, must confront Freddy's demonic spirits, or spirit to save her, the soul of her son Dylan. Yeah, I need to, I need to see these. I mean, it's, it's funny. They're like breaking the fourth wall throughout the entire movie. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, also, just because, like, you know, we're in the year 2019, it's really weird to see that back in the day, and, like, the most luxurious car in Hollywood fucking had a, a, one of those landline telephones. Oh, oh yeah. 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 I mean, shit, 1994. It, it's just, oh, man, it feels so dated. Oh, it man. feels so dated. It makes me feel fucking old. <laughs> yeah, we are getting old. I'm in my fucking 30s. <laughs> I'm not. Yet. <laughs> Keyword there. Yeah. Head shaking everything, Tim. Yeah. 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 I'm that idiot, bro. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. Wow, bro. Wow. What a fine wine. Yeah, <laughs> I died <laughs> boofing the berries. Anyway. God damn it. That is not the name of the movie. I guess, you know, if you're plagued by visions, hopefully ones that you can, you know, actually fight. Yeah, you can fight your visions either at the gym or with Nancy. Nancy. Are you moving into a new home or remodeling a home or office? Are you trying to sell a home but can't seem to find the right people to buy it? Does the energy in certain parts of the home or office feel uncomfortable, spooky, stuck, or blocked? Do you feel your own personal growth, healing, and evolution has stymied? Has there been sudden pain or illness you can't explain? Has there been any deaths? Is anyone having trouble sleeping? Restless children in bed or night terrors? Is there a lot of fighting and bad experiences with the home or office? Do you ever see moving shadows, flying objects, hear voices or smell weird odors? Do your appliances or machines break down or have mechanical issues often? Do you seem to be having a string of bad luck? If you've answered yes to any of the following questions, please consider getting a clearing by us. Please contact Reverend Nancy for a quote at 630-340-0877 or her partner Amanda at 719-271-7309 She knows what you did! Yeah, she knows! She knows? She knows! What you did last summer! I know what you did last summer in 1997! That's, that's an interesting way to segue. Fuck, yes it is! A year after running over a fisherman and dumping his body in the water, four friends reconvene when Julie, played by Jennifer Love Hewitt, don't hear much about her anymore, receives a lightning, uh, a lightning letter by Thor. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Bill here just comes bashing through the wall. <laughs> oh, fucking note strapped to it. <laughs> I know what you did last summer, and Odin's pissed. And your fucking your hammer goes flying back out of the room again. Breaks another fucking wall. Coolie man staring in like this wasn't no no. <laughs> Horton here's a what the fuck. <laughs> well, Julie receives a frightening letter telling her that their crime was seen. I mean, Pat, why are you looking? I'm a perv. 
while pursuing who he thinks is responsible for the letter. You cut that out right now, mister! I'm sorry! <laughs> He's still on about that fucking Jason statue. <laughs> Barry, played by Ryan Phillip, is run over by a man with a meat hook. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Someone getting killed with a meat hook is funny. <laughs> Just the way you read it. Is it not? <laughs> <laughs> the bloodletting only increases from there as the killer with the hook continues to stalk Julie Helen, played by S- Sarah, Sarah together. Yeah. Oh, played God. by Buffy the Vampire Slayer and, and Ray, Ray. Freddy Prince Junior. <laughs> That entire that cast is so 90s, it hurts. That's yeah, I know. Insane. Just reading that, it's like, oh, you man. You don't see any of these people anymore. What is this? It's like, god damn. I think I've seen Sarah Michelle Gellar on a commercial for something. <laughs> she keeps changing clothes really fast. <laughs> what? <laughs> Seriously. I, <laughs> oh, no problem. I will go home and YouTube Sarah Michelle Gellar recent TV ads. <laughs> <laughs> Fact check that shit. I have nothing better to do with my time on YouTube. Uh, I mean, you're on YouTube, so why the fuck? I have nothing better to do. Let's keep this train moving. Wasn't that sweet, Candyman 1992? I don't think this is sweet. It's sweet. It says candy right there. But it stings. 50 Cent wants to take me to the candy shop. You only get penny candy. Candyman. (laughs) 1992. (laughs) Skeptical graduate student Helen Lyle befriends Anne-Marie McCoy while researching superstitions in a housing project on Chicago's near north side. From Anne-Marie, Helen learns about the Candyman, a knife-wielding figure of urban legend that some of her neighbors believe to be responsible for a recent murder. After a mysterious man matching the Candyman's description begins stalking her, Helen comes to fear that the legend... Maybe all too real. It's it has to be real. You know, side note on that one, I actually used to work with a guy that worked that lived in the like grew up in the the Candyman apartments. Really? Yeah. Oh shit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah deep south side, like not a guy you want to fuck with. But he was a cool dude. <laughs> yeah, he, he's like, he remembers them making that and shit like that. Damn, dude. That's sick. I heard that they're gonna be uh, making another Candyman. Yeah, really. Yeah, and he's gonna be uh, main dude's gonna be replies, replying, replying, reprising his role. Yeah, Tony Todd. Oh no, shit. Mm-hmm. Indeed, sir. <laughs> Indeed, uh, more candy to the children. Now this one is my. Uh, I love this one. This one's also a fucking golden nugget. Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Tremors, nineteen ninety. Oh fuck yeah. <laughs> Repairman Val McKee and Earl Bassett are tired of their dull lives in the small desert town of perfection. Boy, it's hot out here. Yeah, it is. But just as the two try to skip down, they happen upon a series of mysterious deaths and a concerned seismologist studying unnatural readings below the ground. What do you want? Is that a dead body? Is that... No, it's Val Kilmer. There's a... <laughs> I don't know what he's doing on set, but it's there. I'll tell her go home. <laughs> Dead bar- we told you we got Kevin Bacon. We don't need you. <laughs> With the help of an eccentric couple, the group fights for survival against giant worm-like monsters hungry for human flesh, and not Val Kilmer. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Do you have punch and pie? Oh, he <laughs> skipped it. Fail. <clears throat> but yeah, what would you guys do if you guys were out in the uh, out in the desert and worms were trying to eat you? Probably just drive. They, probably do the same. I'd stop eating the peyote. Probably. The, <laughs> probably yeah. the same thing that they did. Die. <laughs> My fat ass is not getting away from them giant sandworms. You just gotta stand on the think, rocks. You don't think you can pull vault between uh, rocks? Do I look like I can pull vault? You know what? I might be able to. I'm nimble for a fat guy. Yeah, plus you know you got you get a good enough speed. You got that fucking weight that'll take you right See, over. See, I'll probably shoot over. That's the problem. At that point, you just catapult yourself. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Best oh, death ever. Oh. And there went John. <laughs> he went out a hero. 
<laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Some say he's still flying to this day. <laughs> Bye! <laughs> so, oh, there it goes. It's like Hallie's comment. <laughs> oh, God. All right. So it comes around twice a week and badgers your children. <laughs> <laughs> you goddamn kids! Oh, fuck Who's your that bike. That ain't a huffy. <laughs> Was that a bird? That was an offensive bird. Let's go on to Nightbreed in 1990. Yes. Do, I, do you guys want me to still do like this announcer voice? I love the announcer voice. Uh, you guys keep going with that fucking background music. You're hyping me. Get me hyped. All right. Aaron Boone is haunted by terrifying nightmares of a city of monsters. He goes to see a psychiatrist, Dr. Decker, for help. But what Boone doesn't know is that Decker is really a serial killer. Decker frames Boone to take the fall for his murders, and Boone is killed by the police. But Boone is brought back to life by the monsters of his dreams, the Nightbreed, who in turn join Boone in his quest to stop Decker from killing again. <laughs> yeah, I'm digging it, I'm digging it. <laughs> I haven't seen this one. No? God, there's so many of these I know I'm going to say that I haven't seen. I, I entered horror weirdly. I was very specific on the movies I liked and I didn't like, and for a long time I hated fucking slashers. Understandable. A lot of people do, actually. That's why I haven't seen at least most I of those. I, I started like, off the slasher. I prefer the slasher yeah, movies. I, have some. It's like, I like my big horror was like the slasher movies, like the 80 slasher movies. And the old Universal horror movies. Those are like some of my fucking favorite horror movies. So the 90s was like a lot of stuff I missed. I saw the big ones, but some of these ones I'm like, what? Although I do really want to check some a lot of these out now. So you're saying like you like, kind of like started off probably like on a Halloween and stuff, like the old school slashers? Halloween, Friday the, thir- Friday the 13th. I've seen, like I think I mentioned to you, I've seen all the Friday the 13th movies because... Especially the later ones are just fun. How about they're uh, just funny? I, Halloween H two O. I love Jason X. I don't Halloween H two O. Yeah, from nineteen ninety eight. I, I, I that one I watched on TV. I didn't like but, that one. No, oh. no, no, it's not good. It's not good. No, was H two O the one with uh, <clears throat> with oh, fuck with Buster Rhymes? I no, that was the um. Can they get what? it? I don't know. He was he was either H two O or the That's one the after one the one for. after. I believe. See, I like that one the best because he was the straight one up there. roundhouse kicks fucking Michael Myers and like <laughs> nobody's ever fucking just roundhouse kicked Michael Myers. <laughs> Nobody thought to pull a fucking Chuck Norris. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. Did it work out for him? Yeah, he got. I'm pretty sure he survived the movie. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, Buster Rhymes definitely died. <laughs> he kicked him and survived. Oh no! Wait, no, wait, no, Adam. No, no. That's why nobody kicks Michael Myers. It's right. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds about right. It sounds about right. Oh man. Yeah, because well, uh, in Halloween H two O, two decades after surviving a massacre on October thirty first, nineteen seventy eight, former babysitter Laurie Stroh, played by Jamie Lee Curtis, finds herself haunted or hunted by persistent knife wielder Michael Myers. Lori now lives in Northern California under an assumed, uh, assumed name, where she works as a uh, as the headmistress of Hogwarts. No, of a private school. That would have made it a lot cooler. <laughs> but but it's not far enough to escape from Myers. No, who soon discovers where her, her about her whereabouts. As Halloween descends upon Lori's peaceful community, a feeling of dread weighs upon her. With good reason. Oh. Oh. Yep, I haven't seen this one either. No, I've seen that one. Now you guys say it's terrible. I kind of don't want to see it. Yeah, it's just uh, it's it, it's like watching all all of the Freddy movies and all the Jason movies and all the Chucky. You just gotta watch them. Yeah, you can just yeah, watch they're them. horrible, but it's they're part good. of the fun. Then we just fun. need to have a day and just get baked and fucking watch <laughs> through all of these. All. <laughs> but now this one I loved. I honestly loved this one. Nightbreed? No. I'm skipping to the one after it. We did Nightbreed. Yeah. Did we? I was I totally fucking zoned out. Because we talked about Dr. Daka. The Faculty, <laughs> 1998. So good. I fucking love this movie. It was awesome. The fucking druggie saves the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the students at Harrington High, the principal and her posse of teachers have always been a little odd. But lately, they've been behaving positively alien. 
โอ้โหโอ้โหฮะบอลบอล controlled by otherworldly parasites the faculty try to infect students one by one cheerleader Delia football player Stan drug dealer Zeke And new girl Mary Beth team up with some of the other classmates to fight back against the invaders. No, not you, but I don't like you. The drug dealer seriously saves the day, and that makes me like, fuck yeah, go you. <laughs> <laughs> the one, it's like the black guy who doesn't die at the beginning of the movie. It's 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 awesome because it's like the drug dealer always dies, like at some point. Ah, uh, well, if you watch Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the woods. The stoner lives. Well, I mean, if, if you call that living until the end. Well, yeah. Because I mean, You're right? Yeah. He's like, I got a bug, and smoking the weed makes me impervious to the poison. And he's like, Oh, brilliant! <laughs> oh, well, fuck. <laughs> well, yeah, I didn't see that one coming. <clears throat> that movie is fucking great. Not nineties movie, it's still fucking great. Yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, let's let's move on to some blood sucking bastards like uh, Dracula, Bram Stoker's Dracula. In 1992, Count Dracula, a 15th-century prince, is condemned to the lo- to live off of blood of the living for eternity. Young lawyer Jonathan Harker is sent to Dracula's castle to finalize a land deal, but when the count sees the photo of Harker's fiancée Mina, the spitting image of his dead wife, he imprisons him and sets off for the lo- for London to track her down. Haven't seen this one either. Which what, who was playing Dracula in this one? Gary Oldman. I believe so. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this was the Gary Oldman one okay. with Keanu Reeves. Gary Oldman's just brilliant. Yes, I love him. He is. He's another one of those actors that ha- does not do many bad movies, and but what the ones he does, like movies he does do, he out fucking plays. Mm-hmm. Like, fuck! What the, what the fuck's that movie with Christian Slater? Or he oh. plays the fucking drug dealer. Uh, Two girls, one cup. <laughs> <laughs> no, <a> true romance. <laughs> Hats off to that drug dealer. <laughs> what? Never well, for two girls, one cup, or what he said. <laughs> what you said? Oh yeah, they had to be on drugs. A little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. <laughs> I just launched my tie. Mm. Oh, there it is. Ah, yeah. I almost found it with the people under the stairs. The people under the stairs tripped me. Yeah. They're from 1991. Yeah, still mean to me. The People Under the Stairs, 1991. When young fool Brandon Adams breaks into the home of his family's greedy and uncaring landlords, he discovers a disturbing scenario when incestuous adult siblings have mutilated a number of boys and kept them imprisoned under the stairs in their large, creepy house. Yeah, Lannisters. <laughs> Goddamn Lannisters! Lannister! As Fool attempts to flee before the psychopaths can catch him, he meets their daughter, Alice, who has been spared any extreme discipline by her deranged parents. Can Fool and Alice escape before it's too late? From the goddamn Lannisters. The self-destruct system has been activated. What, now we're Resident Evil? Can they escape within time? I don't know. The incestuant tyrant's coming after them. Yeah, they better hurry. Yes. They better hurry. Daddy Dick is coming for you. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> oh, man. What? <laughs> Uncle Bad Touch? Uncle Bad Touch. Dead Alive, 1992. That was a fucked up transition. Yeah, I know. I just tried to get away from it as quick as possible. <laughs> <laughs> so did I, Tim. So did I. <laughs> Sticks with me, man. Overprotective mother, Vera Cosgrove, spying on her grown son, Lionel, as he visits the zoo with the lovely Paquita, is... A- Accidentally bitten by the fearsome Sum- Sumatran rat monkey. When the bite turns his beloved mother into a zombie, Lionel tries to keep her locked safely in the basement, but her repeated escapes turn most of the neighbors into the walking dead, who can crash a high society party thrown by Lionel's boorish Uncle Les. Get away from the uncle! No, let's crash the party. We're back from the dead and we're here to ravage. Oh. Uh. Stay away from the uncle. No. Uncle Bad Touch. Uncle Uncle Dead Face is gonna... I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna eat his face off. Eat the face off. Okay. Eat the face off. You have to. Just munch, munch, munch. Yeah. Speaking of things that are gonna make you sleepy after eating, Sleepy Hollow, 1999. Woo. Oh, God. Yes. Yeah, 
Set in 1799, Sleepy Hollow is based on Washington Irving's classic, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Faithful to the dreamy, custom-bound world that Irving paints in this story, the film mixes horror, fantasy, and romance and features an extraordinary cast of characters that dabble in the supernatural. Yes. Yeah, I don't think like, much more needs to be said about uh, that. Johnny Depp is in that movie. Johnny yep. Depp's in the Christopher Walken. Plays the Headless Horseman in that movie. Oh, that yeah. was him? Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, remember that. I don't remember that. The guy who plays Dumbledore, the second Dumbledore in the Harry Potter movies, was like the leader, was like the head guy of like the elders in the ta in the village. No shit. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. The principal from uh, Ferris Bueller is also in it. Oh, God. He's also a kid fiddler, believe it or not. Oh, that guy from Beetlejuice? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, man. Ah, oh, that's what he... Yeah, the Beetlejuice. Why didn't I just say that? <laughs> that, that's where I know it from. Speaking of ringworm, uh, <laughs> ring, ringworm. <laughs> I have no transition into this movie title. Ring you, which is the ring, the, the original title, back in 1998. When her niece is found dead along with three three of her friends after viewing a supposedly cursed videotape, reporter Riko Asakawa sets out to investigate. Along with her ex-husband Ryuji. Rico finds the tape, watches it, and promptly receives a phone call informing her that she's going to die within a week. Determined to get to the bottom of this curse, Rico and Ruji discover the videotape's origins and attempt to solve an old murder that could break the spell. This was the original. This, well, I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, it's the same fucking thing as the uh, the American version, like the Ring. But just this is the this is the first version. Okay. Yeah, before it came over to the West and Hollywood they re was like they reshot it to make the. English version. Yeah. That one was way more fucked up than... That's than right here. Our version. It's like the, the original Grudge is way more yeah. fucked yeah. up oh, yeah. than yeah. the um, one Juwan. we got. Yeah. Juwan. Juwan. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. Both of those movies, I respect the, the originals yep. much more than... Japan does you horror watch that very next to break an Amy more. <laughs> what? What? For Amy's gonna come over again for a movie night. You should watch her, um, the Grudge. The, the original, original Grudge. grudge. Whoa. I think I own that one. I own that one, and I also think I own Ringu. Or maybe it's the second Ringu. I don't remember. But yeah, don't watch creepy cursed videotapes. Yeah, I mean, that's basically the lesson of the story. Yeah, I found a couple out in a cabin, and I still refuse to watch them. Yeah, probably a good idea. Well, I mean, for right now, I'm, w I'm waiting for a good night when I just don't care anymore. I'd watch them for a Klondike bar. I'd watch them for a snack. Who would do anything for a Klondike bar? They're not that great. No, Here's a no. question. I'd punch a kid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, you little bastard. <laughs> Give me my bar. <laughs> what would you bar. do for two Klondike bars? <laughs> I'd punch two kids. Ooh, okay. <laughs> You get me a truck of fucking kids. Would you fight it? <laughs> would you fight <laughs> an army of kids for a truckload of claw knife bars? You fucking know it. I need to be armed with something, and I want it to be a 14-inch purple dildo. I will fight off all the kids I can. For the purple dildo or with the no, purple with dildo? No, the, with the purple dildo. For Klondike bars. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll take that for the truck of Klondike bars, yeah. You're, you're going full Saints Row on this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Put me in, like, an elementary school, like... <laughs> <laughs> at recess beating kids with a penetrator <laughs> oh my god <laughs> fuck yes the Klondike Wars it's gonna be like five <laughs> it's gonna be like five like five <laughs> waves like coming at you oh yeah it's, you're gonna have your own fucking spin off game it's gonna be a tower defense <laughs> <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> fucking it'll be like oh my god <laughs> who the fuck made this Oh man! We should bleep oh. all this out, and we should make this actually. <laughs> <laughs> no one gets your idea. Right charge a dollar on the app store. Uh, you're being crafty. Speaking of crafty, the craft of 1996. After transferring to a Los Angeles high school, Sarah finds that her telekinetic gift appeals to a group of three wannabe witches who happen to be seeking a fourth member for the rituals. Bonnie, who's played by Nev Campbell, and that's the only name I'm going to mention, I guess. Um, Rochelle and Nancy, uh, played by Feruza Balk, and everybody, everybody knows her as the, the evil no. one, like the very iconic one. And the girl from, She's uh, from Waterboy. Yeah, the yeah, girl from History Waterboy. X. Oh, yeah. yeah, and American History X. That's I like Vicky, she liked me too. She showed me her boobies and I liked her too! <laughs> like Sarah herself, <laughs> all have troubled backgrounds, which combined with their not, uh, 
Nascent powers <laughs> <laughs> dangerous consequences. When a minor spell causes a fellow student to lose her hair, the girls grow power mad. I'm just thinking about that background in the back. Like, I know. Sound in the background. I know. That's why I continued. I was just like, oh, this is going to be weird. Oh, man. <laughs> what are the, uh, the last time I went to the, sh- the, the horror convention in Schaumburg, they had a craft reunion. And I didn't, I didn't pay the money for the fucking panel because I didn't care enough. But I got to see them all from a distance for the reunion, and that was cool. <laughs> just y- yell from the back, just like, that's pretty cool. Just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> I lick your shitter like an apple fritter, bitch. Who <laughs> <laughs> said that? I didn't buy a ticket. <laughs> just keep walking. <laughs> they actually announced that they are... Uh, they might have remaking a... Remaking it, or... It, there's uh, going to be like a sequel or something. Yeah. There's going to be some type of adaption for it, but who knows how that's actually going to turn out to be. Was yeah, there already we'll a Craft 2? No, there's no? just one. Okay, sorry. But, Good. speaking of things that are dead and probably going to come back, uh, Night of Living Dead, 1990. For, for reasons unknown, the recently deceased are rising from their grave as flesh-hungry zombies. <laughs> Fleeing from the undead horde, a small group of survivors, including Barbara, Ben, and Harry. Barbara. <laughs> They're Barbara. coming to get you, Barbara. He hit me! He hit me! <laughs> Sequester themselves in a remote farmhouse. When the zo- well, with the zombies outside, the house multiplying. What the fuck? With the zombies outside, the house multiplying. Oh, yeah, I said that all the time. The house is multiplying. Everybody get out. <laughs> <laughs> house is everywhere. It's giving birth. Oh, no, I'm in a shack. With the zombies outside the house multiplying, tensions flare as the group argues over the best way to escape their increasingly dire situation before they are overrun completely, and Barbara can't get over how she was hit. You know what's really, like, sad about that movie? Barbara. Like, everybody's looking at <laughs> Barbara. Barbara. <laughs> Barbara's really sad about that movie. <laughs> She's sad in the movie. <laughs> but no, like, they're all super, super slow. Everyone's like, we can't go out there, we need to stay inside. It's like, you could walk past them. You yeah. guys literally do it. Like, at one point in the movie, to get over by the truck, you do it. Yeah. But you're also kind of stupid, so it's like, ah, ah, it's looking at me. And then you fall over, and it, like it's like, oh, that's that's some mighty fine skill you got there. You have, you've been walking for fucking 30 years, and all of a sudden, you turn around, and you're like, whoops, <laughs> gravity, guys. Whoopsie. Oh, he's my legs. Whoopsie, whoopsie. I fucking love that movie. It, like, Tom Savini's did such a fucking, like, excellent job. And the fact that it's it's a shot for shot remake, like there's no differences. Like two AT, yeah, really, yeah. yeah. And it, it, again, it, Tom Savini directed it, like did all the makeup for it and directed it. Like it's like shit, man. All right. Like realistically, if I did not know that it was a shot for shot remake, I would have just thought somebody colorized the original film. Yep. Like that's how good and pretty yeah. it was. Like even the guys that the, like the actors that they got for it, damn near looked like the original actors. I thought they were. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Fuck. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Tales of From the Dark Side, the movie, 1990. <sighs> Haven't seen it. God, motherfucker. This one's a good one. I like I liked this one. They had a bunch of different weird tales in it. Uh, the first the first of three dark tales involves resentful student uh, Bellingham looking looking to an Egyptian mummy for help and settling some scores. Then hitman ha- uh, Helston is contracted to kill a cat that is ter- that has terrorized and even killed members of an extremely wealthy family. A cat? A yeah, cat. It, it, it like s- sits on your face and stuff, and it kills you in your sleep. Mika better not be doing that shit. She's getting me. ideas, man. This is why I don't like the cats. <laughs> us, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> They're gonna get you. They're planning. Fuzzy pieces of shit. <laughs> I love them, but pieces of shit. Lastly, struggling artist Preston witnesses a demon commit a bizarre murder on a city street, but agrees to keep a secret when the devilish being promises wealth in return for his silence. That was a weird one. Like, I'm, I'm just gonna ex- explain this last little one. Uh, so, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie, watch it. It's obviously old. But, dude falls in love with, with this demon, right? Yeah. Yeah. This dude, dude falls in love with this demon, and the demon comes back like 20, 30 years later after he's like married his wife and stuff. And then he tells her of that night. And she's just like, You promised me! And then like devolves into the monster. It's like, I made you fuck me! And then he kills him. Huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Interesting. That's bizarre. Tales from the dark side. Oh. That's a dark side. Oh. But I'm sure that didn't happen on a hill or a house. 
I don't know if it was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> what a segue. Yeah, right? <laughs> House on Haunted Hill, 1999. A millionaire with theatrical... Oh, did you want to read this, Tim? I saw your lips trembling. Sure. A millionaire with theatrical tendencies, Stephanie Price, invites a number of people to stay in a vast, creepy building that used to be an insane asylum. Stephen, accompanied by his bitter wife, Evelyn, offers a million dollars to anyone who can stay the whole night without leaving out of all fear. When Stephen and Evelyn become trapped in tr- with their guests, they quickly realize that the house really is haunted and the spirits dwelling within are very angry. Wicked, wicked. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> on Haunted Hill, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Get funky fruit. It was the funky 90s. <laughs> it was the 90s. That well, was the a end fun of the one. 90s, but I, yeah. I, I do actually like the original of this one, too. The original yeah, is yeah Vincent Price, dude. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You, can't, mm. you can't beat Vincent Price. No, you can't. The man was a legend. Yes. Fuck yeah. Now, okay, really... God. <laughs> really quickly, before we jump ahead, I, I want to throw one out just because it's so short and very obvious. Frankenhooker, 1990. <laughs> A New Jersey mad doctor rebuilds his girlfriend with body parts from exploded hookers. That is all you need to know. That is all that is said about the movie? That's all, that pretty much says it all. I want to know why they're exploded. What the fuck are, where are they? Yeah, what, why, why were a bunch of hookers exploded? Landmines, daddy. <laughs> well, fuck. <laughs> well, man, that's a bad corner. <laughs> <laughs> We need to move on. Yeah, we need to move on. Let's go to the last one we have on this list for now. Yeah, it's not very lucky, but it does have to do with leprechauns. In fact, the leprechaun from 1993. Daniel Grady steals 100 gold coins from a leprechaun while on vacation in Ireland. The leprechaun follows him home, but Dan locks the murderous dwarf in a crate. Held at bay by a four-leaf clover. Ten years later, J.D. Redding and his daughter, Tori, who's played by Jennifer Aniston! She's my friend! Rent... Oh, Grady's pro- uh, property for the summer. When their new neighbors accidentally release the leprechaun, he goes on a murderous rampage to reclaim his gold. Is this the one where he blows up that chick's... Not that one, I don't think. I think that was a different one. Oh, really? There's a lot is of the, different leprechaun movies. Is, that the, one with the, po- is the first one the one with the pogo stick where this old man, he played one, he played pogo on a lung. <laughs> oh, no, that one, that one. Back to That's the, the hood? hood? I can't remember. Yeah. Which one was back to the hood? Oh, that was back to the hood? Okay. I think so. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. god. Ah, I have ah. all of those movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. It was three bucks for the seven pack. Done. <laughs> did, you know, did you see the remake of it? I did. What did, did you think? <laughs> same. And yeah, that, that's my answer. Asked. Wow. That was not what I... Like, they, they advertised, oh, we got the midget for the fucking WWE. He's going to be in this movie. It didn't even fucking tie. Like, it looked like a CGI'd fucking, like, parasite. It, it wasn't even, like, they went, like, actual Irish folklore leprechaun yeah. instead of, like, that. Oh, you did, I did, You know what he looked like? Uh, have you seen um, uh, Yoga Hoosers? Yeah, I I haven't finished it. I, I couldn't get through the whole thing. There's a part where um, <laughs> Kevin Smith is, like, playing a sausage demon or something. Mm-hmm. And, like, he's running around, and it looks like that type of, like, CGI work. <laughs> where it's like, it's there, it's loose, it's just a fun film, but, yeah. yeah it's it's not, it's not great by any means, but Jennifer Aniston's in it, and it kind of, like... that. I think this was, yeah, Did before Friends. Oh, okay, yeah. no, never mind. Yeah. Well, that was a fun list to go through. Indeed, indeed. And that was just a snippet of some of the good 90s horror movies. Yeah, just not all of them, but quite a snippet. Yes. You had quite a list there. Oh, yes. And it looks like you didn't cross off quite a bit oh, on your list. I got, I got a lot that weren't on this list. Like, uh, if you mind if I run through them. You got uh, In the Mouth of Madness. Uh, you got, I think you had Demon Knight on there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Ravenous you had on there. It you had on there. The Cube. Oh, fuck it. I can't believe I didn't talk about Cube. God God damn it. They made that movie with only $30,000. Damn. Like, it had to have been just two cubes and, like, different colored lights. And, like, they just kept moving the fucking, like, cubes upper and, like, like, they just had to just keep doing it like that. And then, yeah, $30,000. Wasn't it, like, a a government experiment to, like, go to, like, a different dimension or something? Like, you're stuck in a Rubik's Cube almost? They, they, uh... They explain that in the second one, but the second one's so fucking bad that it's, it's yeah. so hard. <laughs> it, 
It's so hard to get through. Oh, man. Um, what else do I got? Lake Placid. Lake Placid. Uh, Anaconda. I, I was a big Anaconda. fan of the massive like reptile movies back then. <laughs> that movie was so over the top. I loved it. Which one? Like Anaconda. Placid? Oh, yeah. Dude, first five minutes of the fucking movie is like two chicks eating each other out in, like, in the woods. How is that not gold? <laughs> <laughs> Go um, we're panning this. Let's see. Gremlins 2. My favorite movie on this list besides uh, Scream. Uh, Dead Alive, we talked about Thinner. Oh, yeah. Uh, Deep Blue Sea. The fucking shark ate me. We started to talk about Buffy. That, I don't know if you would consider that a horror movie. It, it mm. dealt with, like, I mean, it, it wasn't a horror kinda... movie. It was campier than that. It, I don't know. I mean, it's, yeah. it still works. I mean, if it's in the time frame of it, it still did dabble in it a little bit. I mean, I, w- I would say, if you're going off 90s type shit... Uh, Buffy is more would be I think more acceptable than using the original Sabrina, you know. Yeah. Like it, yeah. Sabrina was just like, oh, it can't be. Not like the new Sabrina. Yeah. That's dark. That's awesome. I haven't watched that yet. I need to. I just started that same. Yeah. Is it suggest- good? Yes. Really. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. Gotta watch it. Yes, it is good. I need to watch it too. Yeah. Um, I got Vampires, the James Woods movie. That phenomenal, gory is all fucking oh, hell. Mm, classic. Uh, Wishmaster. Oh yeah. I, I don't. Again, this is another one that I'm not sure totally fits in, but Congo. Yeah, I would say that. I haven't seen yes that. Yes, no. In years. And that's another Bruce Campbell movie where he dies in the first ten minutes of the fucking film. <laughs> and then uh, Funny Games, the original Funny Games, because the same director ten years later made the same movie shot for shot. With like different actors and everything. Damn. The the remake is on Hulu right now, but the original ones just as fucking good. Fuck I, yeah. I never understood why they even remade it. Bored, maybe. Yeah, why not? It's like fuck it, retell it. <laughs> I have nothing to do. It's been ten years. <laughs> Let's go. I've got money. Well, I guess if you guys thought we missed any movies, send us a message. Yes, and you could do that at whichishillradio at gmail dot com, or you can go over and join us live on the other. Episodes when we occasionally do so at facebook.com forward slash which is hill radio. Yeah, you should like, subscribe, follow, click that bell, stay notified. Yes, because I guess apparently if you don't click the bell, you don't get notified. You can subscribe, but if you don't hit the bell, you do not get the notification. You gotta, I mean, yeah. Apparently. I get the notification. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You see, Judd, mm-hmm. Judd did it. You should be like Judd. Uh, do be it. like Judd. And click the bell. And click the bell. Until next time, we will see you Wednesdays. At, At 6, 6 p.m. Or Central. PM Central. Center filling gooey. Mm. Wow. Little Debbie. <laughs> Little Debbie. <laughs> Which is hell.